Alright guys, <clears throat> it is a gray and gloomy, but right now, 72 degree morning. 72 degrees here on Monday morning, November 11th, 2019, here on Veterans Day. Uh, as I'm racing the oncoming Arctic Blast. The, uh, the first major wobble of the jet stream <clears throat> in the winter of 2019-20. Uh, 72 now. The high tomorrow, I think they're saying 47. 72 on Monday, 47 on Tuesday. But I guess... Uh, listening to various other parts of the country here on November 11th. <clears throat> I'm sure you have no, I'm sure most of the country is really, uh, feel sorry for Texans. <clears throat> 72 degrees in mid-November. Uh, you know, I'm just sitting here. This is Riding around in my gas-sucking truck, I'm heading to uh, good old Home Depot to uh, <clears throat> get a rototiller uh, for my garden. I am, uh, <clears throat> you know, I needed to plant my garden six weeks ago is the time to put the garden in. So pretty much all I'm doing is planting a big mixture of wildflowers to <clears throat> make a big show of color next spring for when I have my house on the market. Hopefully all of the the uh, colorful wildflowers will get people's attention off the dying or dead cottonwood tree <coughs> and however many <coughs> however many uh, <coughs> dead peach trees I have in my in my peach orchard. I'm not sure how many of my peach trees burned up while I was gone last uh, summer. I think I lost two of them, which will bring me down to 11. But of course, if that cottonwood tree keeps dropping branches, I will have zero peach trees anyway, because that's all kind of a moot point. So I'm ready. I'm heading up to the big box store for a gas-powered rototiller. And that will be my final garden in Garfield, Texas. Will be the uh, the wildflower show. Throw a few I'll throw a few greens in there, a few turnip greens and mustard greens for my last meal from my garden. Anywho, so, uh, <clears throat> Veterans Day. Ah, shit, cause I was gonna go to the bank and, uh, cash this check. Uh, I do appreciate the folks, uh, who just send checks to support my work on on YouTube. Uh, I guess I can just use the good old ATM for that. Uh, Anywho, Veterans Day. Good God Almighty. Don't even get me going. I posted uh, and the band played Waltzing Matilda last night about uh, you know about the Australia fighting Turkey during World War I? Several people explained to me this morning, which, I mean, obviously I knew this. It wasn't so much Australia. It was the British Commonwealth uh, fighting Turkey over God knows. I, I, I've never really, uh, what was... Uh, which Bob Dylan anti-war song was it talking about he never really understood what the hell World War One was all about. Uh, I, I, 
I must admit of, of all the wars the the war to end all wars uh, I must admit I have no I never figured that one out of all the uh, imponderable wars World War one what the fuck was it about uh, I'm, I'm sure at some level it was a resource war uh, but uh, we all know what World War III is going to be about. It is sure as shit going to be a resource war, no matter how they uh, d d decide to spin it. Uh, I'm still sticking to my guns. Uh, that World War III, which very well might be the war to end all wars, is going to erupt in the South China Sea. I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to bet on the, the front runner here in this horse race. I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going with the long shot horse in this race. The South China Sea uh, is going to be the flashpoint for World War III. Now, I do believe that India and Pakistan are going to be the next nuclear flashpoint. There will be a small, limited nuclear war between India and Pakistan. Uh, the two big questions out of that, will just that limited nuclear war be enough to bring down the planet uh, where we don't need a, a you, you know, a full-scale nuclear war from the South China Sea, or there is a chance that uh, that the India-Pakistan war will erupt into World War Three. Uh, you know, this is this is not my military predictions you know are not really my strong point there's only so many hours in a day to try to figure out how this is going to play out but I would very much like to hear your your comments what do you folks out there think uh, <clears throat> I know book hermit uh, says that war, that nuclear war is going to take down civilization and the planet before climate change uh, even gets to be a major player and I have never disagreed with Book Hermit but Book Hermit uh, I don't know if I remember your predictions what is your call you seem to spend more time on this than I do what is your call on where this World War III will break out and of course the big question when I uh, I will not go uh, like Derek Jensen I do not play the when will this happen game but uh, India and Pakistan it's getting ready to blow uh, over there in Kashmir uh, Kashmir is getting ready to blow. It is, Kashmir is probably the single biggest active powder keg uh, on the, with all the powder kegs ready to blow on this planet. Now there's probably some little uh, hell hole in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, you know, which might even be a bigger uh, a bigger powder keg than Kashmir, you know, some godforsaken shithole like Malawi or Niger or, or some goddamn Sahel hole like that. But thank God they don't have nuclear weapons. Imagine if sub Saharan African countries start getting nuclear weapons, how long this planet has. <laughs> <clears throat> yep, if, uh, if, if Sub-Saharan Africa had nuclear weapons, you better believe my, uh, my predictions for uh, the war to end all wars 
where it will begin what would be radically different than they are uh, and God we're all jockeying for our positions here to here in the rat race for the rototiller but meanwhile while it all goes to hell in a handbasket all I all I can do is get out there and plant my wildflowers you know driving to a big box store to uh, rent a gas powered rototiller to plant wildflowers to fool clueless morons into buying a house in a floodplain uh, in in the year 2020. Now that there's so many layers of end times uh, irony and prophecy in, in that. Uh, sometimes I, I wonder: Am I the only person who uh, pretty much looks at every single thing that I do now to find the hilarious, absurdist irony? It's, it's right here in this trip to home. Everything about this trip to Home Depot that I am making right now, every single thing about it uh, illustrates uh, everything that I, uh, that I talk about on this channel about why we're so fucked. Now, of course, the wildflower seeds, so these are all Texas wildflowers. Texas wildflowers, uh, you know, a, a mixture of, of native Texas wildflowers that I'm planting. Guess where I got the seeds from? I bought them in Oregon. They were shipped here from Oregon. My guess is, is that the seeds were produced here in Texas, but pre, you know, farmed and harvested probably within. Uh, certainly within a hundred miles of Garfield, Texas, they were gathered up, they were shipped to Portland, Oregon, where they were packaged. Then I go on the internet and, and look up uh, Texas wildflower seeds and find the best place to buy Texas wildflower seeds is Salem, Oregon. And uh, then they deliver them, so I'm sure they got on a, I'm sure this is the second time these native Texas wildflower seeds have been on an airplane or at least an 18-wheeler, uh, you know, to be delivered from Texas to Oregon so they could turn around and be delivered back to Texas where they came from. Uh, j just this, just this gas-sucking rototiller. Uh, this is two round trips from Garfield to Austin. I have to, you know, I have to drive to Austin, Texas, or I could drive to Bastrop. Either way, uh, you know, it's uh, it's about a oh. From Garfield, to, uh, either way, it's between 15 and 20 miles uh, each way. So, 30 to 40 miles uh, round trip, and I need to make one round trip to uh, pick up the rototiller, another round trip to take it back. So, Let's call it 70 miles. Somewhere between 60 and 80 miles, I am putting on my uh, gas sucking truck to pick up a gas sucking uh, rototiller from a big box store so I can plant native Texas wildflower seeds uh, that have that just flew across the country from Oregon. Uh, every one of these wildflowers probably has about a gallon of oil in it. Uh, this is how many fossil fuels are being used to plant a wildflower garden which will produce 
owe about six weeks of color to uh, show off my property in a floodplain so I can be a climate change refugee and get the fuck out of Texas. <sighs> Multiply that times about uh, 300 million and you have the reason why we are so fucked on Veterans Day 2019 but uh, I gotta remember where the hell where the hell Home Depot is what the fuck did I do did I just fuck up sitting here blabbing I gotta pay attention to my goddamn driving drive safely the sign says get out there and drive safely to Home Depot while you still can. Bye guys.